All right, this is the Mac Daddy Autos update. We're moved, we're officially in stage two. Now what is stage two? I got the corporate credit card, which is gonna be a big help in managing the expenses. So stage two is gonna last two to three months. So what will I be doing in stage two? I will be evaluating, collecting information, seeing what works, seeing what cars work. And during this two to three month period, I should get all of the titles. And what I can do is sell or trade out of cars that are not performing well. And I am really, really looking forward to that because one of the things that I've discovered is when you get the right car, it goes out within a day or two. I've, I've had numerous cars I picked um, that went out really quickly. I was going, I was thinking that the Mini Cooper would have went out really quick, but it didn't. Um, and the Mini Cooper broke. So that's gonna be another repair. Um, now, why am I doing this video? Let's go back to the beginning. When I started this, Last week of April, I bought my first car, April 27th. So from April 27th to May 27th was my first 30 days. From June 27th, uh, from May 27th to June 27th will be my 60 days. And from June 27th to July 27th will be my 90 days, which will be the first leg of stage two. Now, uh, I'm trying to make a point here. There are many people here on YouTube that are telling you that you can start uh, something and literally quit your job in a matter of weeks. Right? This is a consistent theme. And I am showing you the good, the bad, the ugly of starting a business and how it really goes. I'm probably not going to be able to take money out of this business. Um, just kind of depends on um, how it goes. But it's going to be many, many months, if not over a year, before I can start taking money out of this business. Let's go ahead from the top. I have spent $265,000 for this business. Buying cars getting the secured car, and I'm going to talk about why that was important. I'm like, really? In this asshole hitting on his brakes. Traffic. Why was the secure card important? Alright, this is going to be something that I'm going to talk about in corporate papers. How to create your organization. I created the Mac Daddy Autos LLC. I created the Mac Daddy Autos checking account. Got the EIN. Got the corporate credit card. So this company is going to be well managed and accountability is going to be easy because I have a specific credit card for this company. And if you're going to get in the rental car business, you will have expenses. Unless you have you buy new cars. You buy new cars, you're not going to have the issues that I have because I'm buying used cars. But you will still, even with new cars, you're still going to have expenses. You're still going to have oil changes. And from an accounting standpoint, this makes it so easy to keep up with when you have a corporate credit card for that specific business. I've got three corporate credit cards for Disruptive Asset. And now I have one corporate car credit card for um, Mac Daddy Autos. Now, here's something else. And this is something that I've learned. And I, I, then I found this out on YouTube. I found this out because I'm in the business. That when I go for my commercial insurance, I've got to separate my auto sales business from my rental car business. Now, 
I bought all of these cars in my name. Going forward, I am going to create another entity, Mac Daddy Autos, Mac Daddy Deluxe. Create another entity so I can have my, because let me explain something with insurance. If you have a used car lot, you've got to have some insurance. And essentially, if I have to rent a car business under the used car business, essentially, I could be paying twice what I should pay because there's going to be, there is no separation of entities. And there should be the entity set up exclusively for the rental car business. Now, I don't have my dealer's license, so at the moment, it's not a problem. But before I get my commercial insurance policy, I gotta set that up. I gotta do Mac Daddy Deluxe. And for the airport facility, I gotta set that up because that's gonna be a totally different animal. So, what I'm probably gonna do is set up another LLC because I can run both of them through the same checking account. <clears throat> I can do that easily. But from insurance purposes, I need to have two distinctive entities, EINs and all this other stuff. Now, one of the things that I got to do is set up one checking account for Mac Daddy Deluxe. Now, why would I have to do that? Let's say I have a claim. And what, what is my commercial insurance company going to do? They're going to pay the claim out to Mac Daddy Deluxe. Not Mac Daddy Autos. So I would have to have a specific checking account for claims when and if they, when and, well, matter when they come, to deposit that money in there. So I'm going to open that up with Wells Fargo. So I've been doing this close to six weeks. And... I am still in a learning curve. Uh, during phase two, we're going to develop a better vehicle intake process. I got a lot to think about because I may have to move, as much as I don't want to, I may have to move to a more expensive vehicle because the repair issues. Uh, yesterday, I had a repair issue of $1,800 on a BMW and you know, once I get this stuff fixed, it's, it's not going to happen anymore. And one of the things I have learned, and I'm going to do this in the buying cars, because essentially what you got to do when you buy a used car is you got to find a really good mechanic. I'm not using the people that I used before to check the cars. I'm going to use my, you know, I didn't know they did car inspections, but I'm going to use these guys to do my car inspections going forward because... Even though I had the cars inspected, I still had very expensive repairs, $6,500. Now, if I wasn't so well capitalized, that could have been a back, that could have broke my, I mean, I could have three vehicles just sitting around waiting to get them fixed if I didn't have the capital to get those vehicles fixed. So, you know, this is where the corporate credit card comes in. I have $25,000 for oil changes, repairs, key fobs, all of this stuff. Because I use this disruptive asset corporate credit card for that. And what I'm gonna do is all the money that I earn this month, I'm going to use that to pay, you know, it should pay off a lot of that debt. Because, you know, there's debt management. I don't wanna be just walking around like seriously with the debt on there now is a monthly payment of $165 so if I max out that credit card my monthly payment is going to be like 500 bucks so I already know that but essentially you know it's right now it's about money management it's about expense management gotta find me my personal GPS tracker installed person that's going to happen in the next 90 days. And a lot of you are leaving these comments. And one of you, you you're, you're not doing this. That's one of the things that cracks me up with YouTube. People who are not in the fight, not doing it, think that this is easy. And also, once again, the fake-ass YouTubers 
make these things sound like it's easy. The fake ass YouTubers will tell you, the car rental is a passive income business. No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, it, uh, I'm going to put my systems and processes in. I gotta get another phone, the check-in phone, for hire car and Turo. I only currently have one car on Turo. I took the Range Rover off of Turo because it kept getting booked even though I had it snoozed. It was just very annoying, very, very annoying. So the only thing in, on hire car, only thing on Turo is the Mercedes. And I'm probably going to take the Mercedes off of hire car because that's where I've had all my problems. I've not had any issue with Turo Reynolds. Not one issue. You know, they rent it, they bring it back. You know, uh, I had a guy, he didn't bring it back with gas, but he gave me the cash. So I'm probably just gonna leave the Mercedes on Turo and take it off of hire car. And during phase two, there will be a reshuffling of assets. Now, what do I mean by that? I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five SUVs. And I'm probably, like I said, I'm 95% sure that I'm gonna trade them in. Now, not sell them, but trade them in. Because until I get my dealer's license, I can only sell six cars. So I wanna preserve my ability to sell six cars. So I can trade these cars in and I'm gonna find a dealer that has two cars that I want and I'm gonna trade that one vehicle in on those two cars and then put them on hire car. Because one of the things that has emerged is the BMWs are hot. BMWs go out quickly. Um, so I'm going to get more of those. And I may, like I said, I may have to move to a more expensive model. I may have to expand my projections a little bit because it is really, really hard to find a cheap car. And a cheap car is a car under $7,000 that you can put on the platform and it perform. Like there's a guy, because one of the things I gotta do today is I go on there every day and I look at not just I look at where my cars are, and I look at my competition, and I look at where their cars are ranking. I look at are their cars moving? And there's one guy he has 16, you know, and his cars are not moving. Every time I go in there, I see his cars, the same cars. They're not moving. And you know, once again, I don't know this individual, I don't know his business experience, but one of the things that my business experience has taught me is cash flow. If I got a product, and this is something I learned from Craigslist, that's not moving, there's a problem. And the problem usually is price. Usually, that's typically what the problem is. So I'm I am aware of, you know, because like I said, I had a call with the hire car rep and I have 20 cars on the platform and 15 to rent it at the time. And he was like, that's really, really good. That's really good. And, but see, that's not good enough for me because I want to have all 20 rent it. And I will get there once I make these proper moves because here's an issue. And this is an issue that brings me back to my storage auction days. When you buy wrong, it is better to take the price the marketplace is going to give you and then bail out of that. So that's where I'm at with these SUVs. The Range Rovers, it is kind of like a mixed bag because I have two of them out that have been out for three weeks. So I can't say the Range Rovers were a really bad concept, but overall, the last two that I bought, they've just been sitting, and I'm at the lower the price, and they're gone. I've already made up my mind, I'm selling those two, I'm trading out of those two, they're gone, and I will go ahead and get a cheaper, cheaper cars than those, because the Range Rovers draw problems. That's what I've been experiencing thus far.
because you know the, the Range Rover you know the dude that was tricking off on my dime I'm beginning to see like I've never had these problems with a Camry I never had these problems with an Acura and I feel that I would be better off in the future buying more late model Range Rovers for Turo because the crowd at Hire Car is working class individuals, Uber, um, DoorDash, Instacart drivers, that's the majority of their clientele. And Turo, you got millionaires renting cars off Turo. You, you got any and everybody renting cars off Turo. So with Turo, I'm going to move to a more upscale car. I don't know if I'm gonna buy a Tesla. I don't know if I'm gonna buy a Tesla. Um, but essentially, Turo fleet is gonna be newer. And also, another thing about the car sales business. Uh, I've got a friend, we're developing a working relationship. I bought four cars from him. And I, I, actually, I think I bought five cars from him. And um, I'm looking at something that happens with used car dealers. The majority of them don't have staff. The bigger ones do have staff, but the smaller ones is usually the owner and maybe a partner or they don't really have staff. And uh, I know one guy, I think he works like six days a week and he's pretty successful making money and I'm asking myself in the future how can I set up my car sales business where I'm not there so here's the plan and this plan is a year to 18 months out we're not doing this anytime soon uh, once I get my dealer's license I will go to auction buy cars and sell one and get that experience but for a car lot I want to have employees and this is something that I have seen with a lot of car dealers you know I've, I've been buying a lot of cars uh, I bought some cars from a dude he had his whole family up in there he had his whole family up in there so being a small car sales dealership you got a choice you can stay small and work it yourself or you can grow and hire staff. So what my plan is, is to get the car rental business to six figures. And I'm probably going to back away from my plan because uh, essentially I wanted to buy these cars and then sell them. And essentially renting cars is more profitable than selling cars. What I mean, like, let's say I have, let's take the Camry. The Camry has made, like, in six weeks, close to $3,000. If I had sold that car, I would have gotten four, maybe $400 a month. So I would have gotten one $400 payment and probably another one coming. So $3,000 versus $800. So there's more money in renting the cars. And what I will probably do is change my timelines because, you know, I had a specific timeline that I wanted to do this in. And essentially, I got to go where the money is. I got to go where the money is because if I run the car rental business for two years versus one year, and I still need my dealer's license because I'm gonna have to sell cars. And I, you know, once I reach scale, I'm gonna be selling more than six cars per year. So I definitely need my dealer's license. But if I open up my car rental business and get that going for two years, scale it up to six figures a month, and then start selling cars, I would have the capital to hire people to run the dealership. I don't want to work every Saturday. 
you know? And that's one of the things that I consistently see with this business is a lot of these owners, they work every Saturday. You know, uh, one friend that I know, his name's Alex, is him and another, I think that's his business partner, and they, they run it, and they're there Monday through Saturday, and they take Sundays off. And I'm just sitting there like, that's, I don't want that. I don't want to be working six days a week like that. I don't want that. So to prepare, I'm going to have to hire a minimum of three people to sell cars. And what I'm probably going to do is put these people on salary. Hence the rental car business. The rental car business, because essentially, uh, just depending on what happens in the next two years, um, let's say I, I scale up where I have 200 cars. And based upon my math, that's like three to $400,000 a month before expenses. You're going to massive expense is going to be insurance. So we, insurance is kind of going to be $20,000, $30,000 a month. Uh, I will probably have a bigger facility. Who knows what that's going to cost. And let's say we're doing four, 400000 per month. And let's say expenses and expenses would be location, insurance, employees. Let's say expenses run fifty thousand a month. No, let's say sixty. So that's three hundred and forty thousand dollars that's just coming in. I, I plan on taking a six-figure per month salary. Not salary. And essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay myself thirty, forty thousand dollars a month, then take the other sixty slide it in the dividend account and write myself a dividend check every quarter of about 200k and that's how i'm gonna take that money out of that business and then the rest of the money will stay in the business to buy more cars to pay expenses because essentially you know as i go down this road i see massive massive potential massive potential um We've got all kinds of stuff that's going on with um, the business, but I see massive, massive upside. And it's just a matter of straightening out some things. Uh, it's just a matter of getting some things done. It's just a matter of putting some systems and processes in place. It's just a matter... And that, that's probably a renter. And that this is, once again, anyone that's telling you this business is passive, uh, that's another thing I'm going to do is create office hours. And I'm going to have a dedicated phone that I'm going to leave in the office. Because everything comes to my main phone right now. In the future, it's all going to go to the phone in the office. And the hours are going to be um, 10, 9 to 6. And that phone will be answered between hours of 9 to 6. And after six, there will be a message. If you have a problem, yeah, we're so sorry, um, but we will address that tomorrow when we come in. And um, I'm getting away, you know, in the beginning because I'm scaling up, but I got to get away from the weekend people. The weekend people, uh, I rent out so many cars on the weekend. So many people pick up cars on the weekend because they wait to the last minute to pick up cars. And as we go down there, this, this is what's going to happen in phase two. We're going to work around that. We're going to work on messaging. We're going to, you know, we have a lot of things that we have to do. But just to, you know, an update on what's going on with me, where I'm at. And once again, this is not a passive income business. Uh, every time I see a video talking about you get your car thrown on Toro as passive income, I, I'm, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to start laughing because I'm not really a big, I, I have 20 cars, okay? Um, anyone that's got 20 to 30 cars, they're working full time, especially if they're doing Toro because Toro has a lot of in and out, a lot of in and out. So someone checks the car out, it has to be washed, it has to be presented. You can do contactless uh, delivery where you put like a little box on the window and give them a little code and they can get into it. Um, I don't like that because people are not thorough which means I got to trust that people are going to keep my box, not lose my box and put the key in there. And following simple instructions is hard for a lot of people. It's hard. So I don't know about the contactless delivery. I'll have to test that out. 
But um, with Turo, if you have like 20 cars and people are checking them in and checking them out, they're checking them in and checking them out. That's a lot of work because one of the things that I found out, like I today, I got to wash the Mercedes. I've already washed the Mercedes. It's just been sitting. And if a car sits, it's going to get dirty. It's going to get really, really dirty. So um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. But uh, I'll be documenting this whole process because I want you guys to have a firm understanding of business. And there are many people out here that make it seem like you could start a business, quit your job, 30 days, and you'd be making all this money. And the reality is, for most business models, that's just not true. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm six weeks in. I'm six weeks in. Right? And um, we are still going in there. And this is another thing. Like, uh, people, rent, they will call you back to back because they want to talk to you. Um, I have no clue, but I'm about to go in here and get what I need to get, come back and then deal with this. So that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.